in the in the summertime, a lake will, will what they call stratify. It will get to where the, the actual water levels. The I'm not a scientist, so this is going to be in redneck terminology. But <laughs> the, the the water levels will basically separate, and and the the and you can actually see it on your depth finder if you if you have your sensitivity adjusted right. But you'll see that the bottom layer of the water. Somebody knows what this is called. There's a well, now there's a ep, ep, ep something and a. I know you would know what it is. What, what, yeah, and and what's the upper one? Sub. Yeah, yeah. That that's what they are. But that's what they're called. But but that lower the lower one has hardly any oxygen in it whatsoever. So so like bass, game fish, you know, any bait fish, they can't live below that line. Basically, they can live kind of right in it. And there's typically a major temperature change right in there too. That the surface temperature will be say 85 down here at that at the good level where those bass can still live at maybe, maybe 75 or 78, then you drop below this, and it may only be you know four or five feet is where that thermocline, what the actual thickness of it is, you drop below that and it drops 10 or 15 degrees very suddenly. So those, those bass like to be close to it, but they can't actually be down in it due to the lack of oxygen. So that's, that's what a thermocline is. And what, whenever, that, whenever it's cooling off in the fall, Say if this lower level of water is 65 degrees, once the surface temperature reaches low to mid or mid to upper 60s, those water densities due to the temperatures, they start to kind of be about the same. And once they do that, they actually swap positions. And so they just all mix together and it all becomes basically one temperature top to bottom. And that's, that's a thermocline. That's when you'll, and you'll actually see that in, in the water. If it's a very clear lake, it's, it, it'll show up very obviously because it'll just turn to, turned a tea color um, is, is the best way to put it. But that turnover is when those, the, basically the top and the bottom kind of mix together. Once that water's cooling back off, and it usually happens around 70, between 70 and 65 degrees is typically when that seems to happen. You turn your sensitivity all the way up or all the way down and then you can see that line. It, you you typically line. have to turn it up a little bit more. You yeah. Line yeah. Yep, you can see it. And it'll, a lot of lakes, it won't start happening until July or August is, is a lot of times, especially in this part of the country, it has to get really good and hot. But, but you will. If, if they get them in and if it's a deep lake, it will absolutely show up. Um, lowland reservoirs, as far as kind of defining those, they're you know, a little bit more river type lakes. The, the Tennessee River, most of those lakes could be considered lowland reservoirs. Uh, the Coosa River chain of lakes, those could be considered uh, lowland reservoirs. And, and kind of riverine reservoirs is another way you could put that. You know, generally shallow, flatter lakes. A lot of them do have grass in them. Um, not necessarily all of them, but a lot of them do. Those are, those are some of your classic lowland reservoirs. Even Toledo Bend, Sam Rayburn, those lakes down in there would be, would be lowland reservoirs. Generally flatter. A lot of them still have pretty deep water in them, but just the general contour of the bottom is, is pretty much flat overall. And the neat thing about those bass will use that there will always be some that are in shallow water. There's no doubt about it on a lowland reservoir. There will always be some fish up shallow. But some will, they'll kind of split up in the winter and summer where some fish will stay, will move out deep and some fish will stay shallow during those times. So you kind of you see two distinct groups of fish typically on, on lowland reservoirs. And in the winter time, the, the bass will, will be in areas where they can get to deeper water. And again, that deep is a relative term. On a, on a lowland reservoir, a lot of times I'm thinking of deep water being 10 to 15 feet. You know, it, it, if it's got 20 or 30 close by, that's, that's fine too. But a lot of times if they've got 10 to 15 feet, that's about all they need um, in, in a lot of situations. Some will stay in the major creek arms and again, some will be on the main lake. Uh, the, one, of the, one of my favorite ways to fish this time of year, especially if it's not just extremely cold, is that the last deep water in creeks, if you imagine going back in a creek, and you go through there and it's, there's a couple little channel bends or, or different things and you go through a place that's, you know, six or eight, maybe ten feet deep and then you, the next corner you make goes into a, a big flat and there's not any water back in there over three or four feet deep. That last kind of little deep hole that, that's back in a lot of, a lot of creeks on, on lakes like this is a lot of where those bass will come out to. You know, those bass that were in there in the fall will pull out to that last little place. And a lot of times that, it'll hold a group of fish all winter long. Now I'm not saying a, a place where you can go and catch 50 every time that you, that you hit them, but a, a place where you can go and every time you stop there you'll catch two or three or four. Um, you know, and, and you can kind of, that's a good pattern you can run that time of year is you can run those last 
deeper holes in, in creek arms and, and run across a few fish that way. Um, in the springtime, it's, it's pretty similar to the highland reservoirs. The, the shallow bays and pockets are where the bass are going to go to spawn. And a lot of times those, these areas are going to warm up very, very quick. If you get, you know, if you want And the information Bass University provides isn't your basic run-of-the-mill fishing video. This is specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly.